Take your Bibles and turn to 1 John chapter 4, and let's stand together for the scripture reading tonight. We have one more wonderful song, and uh, then we'll get right into God's Word tonight as we learn more about discerning the spirits. And of course, tonight for the world is Halloween, and it's kind of a joke time for most people, and kind of a fun, kind of an excuse to just get out and do some things. And, and yet, there's a side to all of this that's very much of the spirit of this world, and even the origins and such of that holiday. And uh, we want to be a discerning people, and here's a passage that helps us discern the spirits, the spirits that are of God, the spirits that are of this world. There's a reason that you're in church with a Bible in your hand and not dressed immodestly going from door to door tonight or sitting at a bar. By the way, how many of you are glad you're not sitting at a bar tonight? But there's a spirit, there's the spirit of God that led you here tonight. And there are spirits that lead people to live wildly and ridiculously and sinfully. And so we're going to learn a little bit more about that in a brief message tonight. 1 John 4, 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. The word try, we saw last week, means test them. Don't just follow the way of the world, the spirits of the world. Test them. Test these spirits to see whether they be of, what's the next word say? God. God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of Christ, capital S, Holy Spirit. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of anti-Christ. People have often asked me. Are, uh, is the vaccination the mark of the beast? I don't think that for a minute, but I'll tell you what I do think it is. It's a dry run for the mark of the beast. The world is getting ready and the technology is getting ready and to be able to know who has this, uh, who has that. And, uh, and certainly uh, there will be an antichrist and he could very well be alive today. And uh, we need to be discerning the spirits and discerning the doctrines that false prophets teach so that we don't plunge headlong into false teaching. So the Bible says that, that if, you, if a spirit confesseth not that Christ has come in the flesh, is, is, he is not of God, and this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And that's where we left off last week, and then verses 5 and 6 tonight. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. And he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now, folks, this is an amazing passage. There are those that hear the spirits of Satan and are of the world. And there are those that hear the spirit of God and are of God. And you talk about a stark contrast. Tonight, Halloween night, there are those who hear the spirit of the world calling and they answer. And there are those who hear the Spirit of God, and they answer. But it's not just Halloween night, it's every day and every night. And so tonight we're going to learn a little bit about what it means to follow the Holy Spirit of God tonight and every night. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the clarity of your word. Help us as we teach and expound tonight. May we be strengthened in our faith. Bless the song we're about to hear and then the message I pray And Lord, give us the discernment we need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. This past week, the Wall Street Journal had a survey reported indicating that half of all young people, ages 13 to 25, surveyed, said that they do not believe religious institutions care about the things that they care about. By the way, uh, be careful when you want the Bible to agree with you or the church to care about only what you care about. But in their way of thinking, they said they just don't care about the things we care about. The issues included racial issues, gender issues, immigration, income inequality, and gun control. They said we would, we would care more about the church if the church agreed with us on these issues. The biggest disconnect of these youths is that 71% want 
want the church to agree with their views on the LBGTQ issues. Now, the Bible is very clear that God loves all people, and we as a church love all people. But the Bible is also very clear that man with a man is unseemly, or a woman with a woman is an inordinate affection, and this is not the creation or the desire of God, yet 74% of the young people in the United States of America say we would go to church if they would agree with us on that issue. Now, of these 71% who want the church to agree with them on that issue, 78% of them, listen now, describe themselves as being spiritual. So these are young people who say, we're spiritual, we are spiritual people, but we want the church to teach what is the opposite of what the Bible teaches. And so there are people in America who describe themselves as spiritual, but at the same time as Bible-denying in their everyday walk. There are two lessons from that article that I took. Number one is that the media is winning the battle of programming the minds of young people. The media is teaching them what is socially acceptable, what is socially right, how to think about every issue uh, that they mentioned, in particular this, this LBGTQ issue. The media is programming young people. And you watch a young person who is spending the majority of their time on social media, majority of their time watching television, and the way that they think is changed. You can't spend 30, 40 minutes a week in God's Word or in God's house or with mom and dad around the table and seven or eight hours on media and win that battle. And so we see the media continues uh, to move forward with the agenda of Satan. And we also learn, secondly, that there is a spiritual difference between, or there is a difference between being spiritual, small s, and being spiritual, capital S, or led of the Holy Spirit of God. Some spirits are of the world, as we saw tonight, and some are of God. That God has the Holy Spirit, but God also has ministering spirits, and Satan has spirits or fallen angelic angels as well. Folks, we need to understand that calling ourselves spiritual, even saying that we believe in God, is not enough. Some, some of you that are just new in soul winning, you knock, to, knock on someone's door or talk to someone at work and they say, oh, I believe in God. I have seen so many Christians say, oh, good, they believe in God. I don't have to carry the conversation any further. Believing in God is not the test. The Bible says in James 2.19, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. When someone tells you they believe in God, do you understand that brings them to about the same spiritual level, just that statement by itself, as Satan. Satan believes there's a God. The question tonight is, according to this 1 John chapter 4, what do they say about Jesus Christ? Verse 2, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. The question tonight is, are we following the Holy Spirit? Are we following the ministering spirits of God in knowing his son, Jesus Christ, as Savior? And so, as we consider the spirituality of America, no one is doubting that there is much spiritualism in America There are many Wiccans in America. There are many astrologers in America. There are many New Agers in America. There are many pantheists in America, all of whom describe themselves as spiritual. There are many tonight uh, within false churches and cults, such as the Mormons or Jehovah Witnesses, who would tell you to your face that they believe in Jesus, but they do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They are spiritual, but they are not walking in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. Now, you say, well, that sounds very judgmental. Well, just stick with me tonight because you're going to see the Bible itself declares that there are those who follow the spirits of this world and there are those who follow the spirit of heaven and the spirit of God and that there's a very clear delineation given. And I don't know about you. I don't say this because I want to be sounding better in some humanistic, fleshly kind of a way. I just want to be on the right side of that line of demarcation. I want to be found on the side of Scripture. And I don't care if 74% of 18-year-olds don't want to be there. I don't care if Sacramento doesn't want to be there. I don't care if Washington, D.C. doesn't want to be there. I just know as for me and my house, I want to serve the Lord, and I want to be on the right side of that line of demarcation. 
So what does the Bible tell us about the spirituality of this world and how can we have spiritual discernment in this era? And I think what an amazing night to teach on this, on this Halloween night, to really discover and discern that we want to walk in the spirit, Galatians 5, not according to the spirits of this world. And I'll tell you where the spirits of this world will take you, far away from your godly heritage, far away from the word of God far away from what you thought when you were seven and eight and nine, when you were pure of heart, they will take you farther than you ever thought you could possibly go. It's so important that throughout your entire life you walk in the Spirit of God. Well, let's notice three quick truths tonight, and then we'll have some hot cider and some fellowship, shall we? First of all, let's consider the realm of the false spirits, the realm of the false spirits. The Bible tells us in verse five simply, they are of the world. Therefore, they speak of the world. Verse 5 is a continuation of verse 3. And in verse 3, we learn that these false spirits confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And I want to remind you tonight that the anchors on the mainstream uh, television, most all of them do not confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I want to say to you tonight that uh, 99.9, if not 100% of the rock and roll stars that young people are influenced by do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I want to say tonight that many of the teachers and secular colleges tonight do not confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And the realm of their belief is very worldly. They are very worldly wise. And according to verse number five, the Bible says they are of the world. These spirits are of the world. These spirits that many of these teachers possess are of the world as is the spirit of that which will come, the Antichrist. So the realm of the false spirits, uh, these are evil spirits that promote false teachings, that promote rebellion against the parents, promote rebellion against God. These spirits are of this world, very simply stated, verse 5. They are of the world. Let's say it now. They are of the world. They refers back to verse number 1, again, in regard to the spirits. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits to see whether they be of God. So there are spirits that are not of God. There are spirits that are of this world. They are evil spirits. They are of satanic origin, and they are of the world. Now remember, the world is Satan's sphere, and those in the world can be easily deceived by his subtle deceptions. Remember, the Bible describes Satan as the prince and the power of the air. And he is, in many instances, controlling the flow of information today. It's his realm, this world. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says it this way. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the glorious light of the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So it would appear scripturally that the Satan and the spirits of Satan are going to do all they can to blind the eyes of people from knowing Christ and from seeing the truths of the spirit of the living Christ. And so we see the realm of the false spirits is that they are of this world and they are following after the spirit leader of this world, Satan himself. Not only are they of this world, but they speak of this world. We see that in verse four. It tells us here, that in verse number five, rather, therefore speak they of the world. Now, what does mainstream media with its unsaved, Christ-denying leadership talk about? They talk about sensuality. They talk about, and they, they make sure the funniest guy on the show is the guy that's living the opposite of the Bible. They speak against the family. They speak against mother and father. Many shows are making fun of Christianity and Jesus Christ in terms like saved and, and uh, oftentimes little subtle innuendo and, and the freakiest, weirdest guy on the show, the worst criminal, the pedophile is always going to be the Christian. And many times we see a characterization from the media today depicting Christ or the followers of Christ as the problem in the world. Why? Because they speak of the world. They speak the world's agenda. Folks, if you haven't seen it, this world has an agenda, and it's an anti-God agenda. It's an agenda to turn the minds of young people away from their faith and away from the truth. And so the Bible tells us the false spirits are of the world, and they speak of the world, and they continually repeat the themes of the world, the themes that oftentimes are divisive, the themes that oftentimes are anti-God. Thirdly, 
they are heard of the world. The Bible says in verse number five, again, just very simply stating about these false spirits, and the world heareth them. How many of you have ever noticed that there seems to be quite an audience for this worldly message? It seems like lots of people want to go to Lady Gaga, even though she promotes all kinds of hedonism and sensuality and homosexuality and bestiology and all types of sinfulness is embodied in her performance, and yet she sells out. Why? Because she is of the world, and the world and the spirits of the world want more of that wicked message. And so we see that they are heard of the world. False teachers, uh, those that are under the control of the spirits of this world, are often heard in large, large number. That's why a church like this in Southern California in 2021 is truly a miracle of Almighty God tonight. Satan hates it because Satan would rather that all of us were at some kind of a festival tonight, just a little bit out of our minds and and delighting in sensual things and in the things of this world rather than sitting here reading the Bible tonight. Now let me show you what the Bible says about these spirits in 2 Peter chapter 2, if you turn there briefly, 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. We're talking about the spirits of the world who speak of the world, who are of the world, who are heard of the world. 2 Peter 2, 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring damnable heresies. Let me be clear tonight that the false prophets and false teachers are under the influence of the false spirits. And they, the Bible says, will be among you, who privily will bring damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now watch this. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. So in other words, these that speak blasphemy, these that, that uh, speak against Christ, and many of these rock and roll videos are satanic in their, in their symbolisms, not just at Halloween, all year long. And that's nothing new. And some of you that grew up in the hippie movement and remember some of the different eras gone by, you know this to be true. Whether it was Kiss, Knights in Satan's Service, or whether it was Blue Oyster Cult, or whether it was some seemingly innocent little group like the Beatles singing about revolution or questioning the creative powers of God, there has always been an undertone questioning God throughout the world's age of the spirits of this world calling the world's attention to philosophies that are opposite of the teaching of God's word. And verse two in Second Peter says that many will follow their pernicious ways. Verse three, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. Whether this is the false teachings of, uh, of the false prophets who are simply taking advantage of those who were not grounded, or whether this is the spirits uh, that are involved in uh, forms of entertainment, as I've mentioned tonight, there is a merchandising of people who gladly follow after the message of this world. And I believe it was Jerry Vines who gave four tests of the false spirits as you as you test which spirit you will allow to influence your heart and your mind. And I'm talking literally about which religious show to listen to or which television show to watch or which type of music to listen to. Does the Bible not tell us tonight to try the spirits to see whether they be of God, yes or no? Yes. And I'm telling you that there are spirits of one kind or another behind every show and every song. Is everybody with me tonight? And it is your responsibility to test the spirits. Is this a television show that is anti-God and anti-Christ? Is this music subtly creating or undermining uh, your appetite for God, or is it increasing your appetite for God? Is that a fair question tonight? And God says we're to test the spirits. Here's four suggestions from Dr. Jerry Vines. Number one, check the content. Check the content. That's according to verse 3. Is this person someone, is this someone saying something that denies Jesus Christ? If so, turn it off, the deity of Christ. If their teaching does not line up, if this teacher, if this uh, this entertainment somehow is degrading toward the deity of Christ, turn it off. Number two, check their congeniality, he said. Meaning here, according to verse number five, does this seem to be widely accepted with the masses? Because if this message is so tapered down so that the masses will receive it. If it's so watered down, then it is likely something that you don't want to participate in. 
And uh, I, I read an article this past week about this Lady Gaga whose newest song is about murdering someone. And, and yet it's selling out every concert with an entire theme on the subject of murder. Try the spirits to see whether they be of God. Is that something that God would be glorified in your watching and participating in? So check the content, check the congeniality. Number three, check the commercialism. Verse five again says, the world heareth them. They are exploiting their followers commercially. We saw that in 1 Peter, constantly appealing for money. And so check the commercialism. And then number four, check their character. What kind of a life is this person living? Does their private life match their public life? Now, look at chapter 4 and verse 5. It says, they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. This is something that I've tried to practice in my life, not only with the unsaved media, but even with saved entertainers. And sometimes, I think it would be wise for you to ask this simple question. Does this singer that my kids worship and love and want, does this singer have a testimony in their private life that's real? That's a fair question. You ought to ask yourself concerning certain teachers. Over the years, I've watched people get all entangled in Christian teachers, and I know a lot of things having traveled and been around in ministry. Sometimes these folks have been uh, through two or three uh, marriages that have broken apart. Some of the authors I know that have written a lot on the family have had multiple times their young people, their own children going into drugs and so on and so forth. I'm not speaking against them. God help them. God give them mercy. But I want to know, is this person living what they're writing about? Is this, is this person that's speaking into my life every night on television or on the radio, is this person experiencing the fruit of the Spirit themselves? So Jerry Vines gives those four tests, and I think they're great. Content is what is being said true. Congeniality, is this something that's so watered down the masses are taking it in? Commercialism, is this something that is just a way to take advantage of me? And character, is this spirit, uh, is this person that is, that is speaking out, whether it be in the political, religious realm, or entertainment realm, is their character something that I want to become? Ladies and gentlemen, nearness is likeness. And I believe that there's something to be said for being very careful who you allow to influence your life. And so we are commanded in the scripture, try the spirits to see whether they be of God. That's why even with sporting events and sport characters, my sons would tell you this over the years, when there was someone on the athletic floor that seemingly had a good testimony, they were resisting lives of prostitution and drugs, I would always lift them up in the eyes of my sons before the others that just had talent. Anybody can have talent. It takes somebody to walk with God in the midst of all of that. That's why years ago when A.C. Green wrote his uh, book on moral purity, I bought copies of it and gave it out to teenagers in our youth group and had him come here and speak a few years ago to our teens. Why? Because he's a man who maintained his virginity until the time that he was married, and I felt that his life matched his message. And when you're looking at, look at, you can root for someone to make a basket, but don't emulate the lifestyle of someone that's not living according to the word of God. And, and I think it's so important today that we test the spirits to see whether they be of God. See, why is it so important? Because the devil has every teenager in this room in his sights. And he wants through the media and social media to, to show you that all the fun is on the other side, on the dark side, with Satan's spirits in this world. But God says, I, you better try those spirits. You better see where that's going to go. You better listen to the message about the prodigal son because he had a spirit of rebellion that led him straight to the pig's pen. And so the realm of the false spirit is this world in which we live. Notice, secondly, the relationship of the believer. Now, our relationship should be much different. Verse 6, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Now, notice that phrase. What an amazing phrase. We are of God. Now, if you are saved, you have been bought with a price. You have been purchased. 
We are of God's. What? Know ye not that you are the, uh, that you are the temple of God? The temple of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost that lives within you? You have been bought with a price, the Bible says. How many of you understand tonight that if you're saved, you have been purchased lock, stock, and barrel by the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ? So once you were of the world, once you were in darkness, once you were uh, following after the ways of Satan, but when you were saved, you were purchased by the blood, and now I belong to Jesus, and Jesus belongs to me. I am of God. That's what the Bible says in verse number six. We are of God. Let's personalize that and say, I am of God. Ready? Begin. I, I am of God. I might be in a world celebrating Halloween. I might be in Southern California. I might be surrounded by who knows what. There might be all kinds of spirits speaking through the television, through social media, false religion. All of that is around me. I see it. I hear it. But I am of God. Now, the Bible says here, we are of God, and he that knoweth God heareth us. Quickly, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. The Bible says here, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. So this man that is of the world, this man that follows the spirit of the media, the spirit of the age, controlled by Satan himself, this man finds the things of God, the Word of God, to be very boring. But the man that is of God, he has a desire to know what this book says. You can always tell when someone is saved uh, as to their change of appetite. They want to get to church. They want to read the Bible. 1 Corinthians 2, 14, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now watch this. A saved man can enjoy a football game and enjoy aspects of the athleticism, but the unsaved man can enjoy those things as well. The unsaved man can enjoy a football game. The saved man can enjoy the Word of God. The unsaved man has no interest in the Word of God. When the preacher says we have been bought with a price, Jesus shed his blood for our sin, we're sealed and on our way to heaven, the saved man either audibly or within his spirit says, amen. The unsaved man is like, what's that? That's not nearly as exciting as Tom Brady throwing a touchdown. Why? Because he does not discern the things of God. They are spiritually discerned. They are discerned of the Holy Spirit. These are truths that we understand because God has illuminated our mind through his word and through his spirit. First Peter 2 and 1, wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. In other words, a, a saved man has an appetite for the things of God. A saved man wants to know what the Bible says. So we are of God, the Bible says. And here it also says, he that knoweth God heareth us. So we are of God and we know God. The evidence that we are of God is that we want to know him. We want to hear what his word says. Look, at every one of you are going to get tired. Sometimes you might be on a Wednesday night. Boy, it's connection group time. It's a little more time to get in the Word, but I'm so tired. I understand the the physicality of that. But may I say tonight that in our hearts, there should always be a desire to learn more of God, to draw closer to Him, to be His friend, to, to be the friend of God, to hear from Him, to love Him more. Listen, only the person who knows God, hears and heeds his message, will understand how to take sides in the spiritual warfare today. Many Christians are taking the wrong side because they are not walking in the Spirit. They are being influenced by the spirits of this world. Remember the Thessalonian church in 1 Thessalonians 2.13, it says, For this cause thank we God without ceasing, because when they received the word which they heard of us, they received it not as the word of men, 
But as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. The thing that made the Thessalonican church such a standout church was the way they received God's word. They wanted it, they desired it, and they received it as it is the word of God. And so the relationship of the believer is simply this. We are of God, and we want to hear from God. The realm of the false spirits is the world in which we live. And then the relationship of the believer is that we are of God. And if you're not of God tonight, you can be of God by simply receiving his son, Jesus Christ, as Savior. You can be born again into his family by just trusting Christ as your Savior tonight. And if you are of God and you've been listening to the spirits of this world and you've been going in a terribly difficult and dark direction, God loves you so much that if you would repent of that sin, if you would confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you tonight and to bring you back into fellowship with him. The realm of the false spirits is this world system. The relationship of the believer is to say, I live in this world, but I'm not of this world. I'm of God. I've been purchased by his son, Jesus Christ. And then notice finally tonight, the reasoning of the saved. All right? We, we get it. There's There are spirits that are of Satan and of this world. They control much of the media today and much of the uh, the world's uh, political system is is heading in a a system that is anti-Christ. We see this, and yet in the midst of all of that, we can be of God. And so how should we reason differently than the world? Look at verse 6 as we close. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Speaking here of the apostles, the apostolic truth that was presented. When you know God, you want to hear the truth. But it says in verse 6, He that that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now notice this phrase, hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. How many of you want to know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error? Oh, we should want that every day. Lord, today, listen, as I go to work, Lord, help me to walk in the spirit of truth and help me to avoid the spirit of error. As I turn on this news channel, even your favorite news channel, even your conservative news channel, you should discern through that the spirit of truth, the spirit of error. I I hate to disappoint you. 99% of the people that work at Fox News are not saved. I've been there to New York offices, I've, I've observed, I've listened, I'm telling you, uh, just because they're conservative doesn't mean that they're born-again Christians. And when someone does not have the Holy Spirit of God, you need to very discerningly listen to every single word, every song. I don't know if you're like me, sometimes I'll maybe be listening to a song, maybe a secular song, and it seems like the melody's fine, it's just kind of an innocent little love song, but suddenly there may be a phrase in it. And I discern that that phrase is against the scripture, against my God. What do you do? Turn it off. You may be watching a movie. Seems just fine. Just kind of a you know, Western movie or whatever you think. And suddenly, there's something in that movie that is defaming toward God or, or somehow belittling the one that's trying to do what is right. And you have a choice right there. You have a choice to obey the Holy Spirit and to walk in the light. Or to just let the spirits of this world have a little more influence on your life. Now, John's conclusion to this section about trying the spirits is that as we walk in his spirit, we can know the spirit of truth and we can know the spirit of error. The spirit of truth is one of a dozen titles that God gives in the Bible for the Holy Spirit of God. The spirit of truth. And I want you to think about that. God has told us that we can know the spirit of truth, we can know the spirit of error. And behind all of the false cults and all of the false religions is the spirit of error. So there is in this world the spirit of truth, and it typically involves the truth of Jesus Christ and whether he is being exalted. And there is the spirit of error, and that is the spirit of religiosity that says Jesus is one of the ways. That is the spirit of antichrist that says you don't even need Jesus Christ. It is the spirit of error. And the reasoning of the saved, the way that the saved think, is that they try the spirits to see whether they be of God. 
And while they may receive some general information from the media or some form of of relatively so-called innocent entertainment, they are constantly trying the spirits to see whether they be of God. And that means that a mature Christian is not just watching television. He's not just surfing the channels. He's not just surfing the internet. He's smarter than that. She is not just strolling through Instagram. They're not just going to hang out with some people. They are discerning. They are trying the spirits to see whether they be of God. And they are very cautious as to where they go on the internet, as to which channels they watch on the television. Is everybody with me tonight? I don't know how else to teach tonight to try the spirits other than to give you real life illustrations that all of us need to be the type of people to know that there are those spirits of this world and there is the spirit and the spirits of God and that we must daily try the spirits to see whether they be of God. Teenagers, there's coming a time when you won't be in a Christian school, you won't have parents following you around, but you will be in a world that is surrounded by the spirits of Satan and you will have to make this choice to say, I am of God and I will try the spirits to see whether they be of God before I just gravitate and take something into my life. And there are millions of Christians in America today who are more under the influence of the spirits of Satan than they are of God. I'm not saying they're possessed of Satan. I'm not saying they're not going to heaven. I'm saying they are under the influence of the spirit of this air, of this world more than they are of God and their lives are a testimony of what I just said. And so I encourage you tonight as we continue forward in this generation, in this new decade, to try the spirits. Teenagers, there is good and there is evil in this world. And if you know the Lord, you can hear his still, small voice. Parents, be careful what influences you allow in your home. Be careful that as a parent, you're trying the spirit to see whether it's the spirit of God. Be careful to talk to your kids about who your heroes are and who their heroes should be and Be honest enough to discuss something that was anti-Christ or something that was undermining the very word of God. Talk it through. Settle it on the truth of God's word. Why? Because as we close tonight, verse 6, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. Can I encourage you, church, tonight, with all the spirits and goblins and ghosts running around Lancaster, can I encourage you tonight to try the spirits to see whether they be of God? We are of God. May we have an appetite evermore for the truth of God's holy word. Try the spirits to see whether they be of God. Let's stand together, shall we? Can I have your attention for a moment? How many of you tonight would say, Pastor, this kind of got my attention again on this subject of trying the spirits. God is my helper this week. Look right here, moms, dads, teenagers, with my social media, with my television, with the guys at work, with those around the water cooler, wherever, I'm going to be listening differently. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to help me because I am of God. And if there's somebody using Jesus' name in vain, I know that's not of God. I'm walking away. If there's somebody on social media making fun of, ah, going to church and hearing all about Jesus, I guess you have to go on Sunday night. I guess you have to do this or that. And you're just being sarcastic. That is not the Spirit of Christ. And there's plenty of sarcastic Christians out there just wanting to thump on you. You've got to be the one who tries those spirits. Is that a wholesome, godly, loving, edifying spirit? Or is that a sarcastic downer spirit that you need to turn away from? Try the spirits to see whether they be of God. Look at the life of the one that is speaking out against your faith. And do your very best to follow after the Holy Spirit's leading for you. It's more than just living by a list of rules, and it's more than just being a member of a church. It's having an abiding, John 15, relationship with the Lord each and every day and doing your best to test the spirits to see whether they be of God.